Can you see it now? I just love, give me give me a second. Yeah, put it here. Perfect. Okay, so I'm sure you're you're going to introduce yourself, and we are yeah. already in time. So no problem. We're going to hear going to hear a talk about your graphic information systems. Stay to to Cantins. I hope I spelled that quite right, but uh, you can do better, I'm sure. So it's your sure. stage. Come. All right. So uh, thanks everyone to assist to this presentation. So my name is Matteo Boudon, and I'm. Um, <clears throat> I'm a GIS consultant for GVC Association. So I'm going to make a presentation about the GIS of the state of Tocantins in Brazil. So I'm going to like uh, share my presentation in three parts. I'm going to start by speaking about the issues, um, a structure like uh, the state of Tocantins can actually meet while um, uh, trying to manage some data. I'm going to actually uh, expose the situation that was the situation of that state before um, finding solutions like the one our company can provide. And then I'm just going to just explain uh, what is exactly our solution. And I'm going to sh uh, show a bit of uh, practical exercise on the, on the platform. So I'm going to start with the issues. So the first thing to know is that for um, for a structure like the state of Tocantins, uh, there are many issues going on with the data. So the first thing is that there is a lot of heterogeneous data. So it means the data is very different uh, depending on what is the purpose of that data. It can be spatial. It can be uh, there's many many kind of data, and actually it can be sometimes. Uh, very hard to manage and to store. So there is a need for a multi-user tool in WebGIS interface for storage, dissemination, and analysis of information. And some states or some, for example, uh, municipalities or regions like the state of Tocantins can sometimes struggle to get access to it. So there is also a need to comply with legal norms for territorial and environmental management, uh, technologic infrastructure, um, cartographic production, and dissemination information management. So there are many issues going on with the data. And the main thing is actually finding a way to make this data available to as much people as possible in the easiest way as possible. So regarding the past situation, um, there were, for example, many, many vectors with, with reference systems outside the current official standard and without metadata, which makes the data very complicated to be used. Uh, there was also a problem with the information that was actually dispersed on multiple locations. And it was actually making it very difficult for users to actually search for the data, access the data and use it. So this situation, is actually something that's going on with some um, variety of maps that were that were very different on the on the structuration on the form of the map, and there was actually a, a huge diversity of formats that could be from PDF, uh, JPEG, APGL, HPGL. Sorry. So all of this was making the information hardly usable and the data very hard to reach. Um, there was also a lack of accessible metadata and technical information about the files and the data. And probably the most important thing is that there was a very partial availability for the data. So for example, there was some data that was, that was very hard to make available for, I mean, the, the, the whole population. So there was some data that was easy to use and some that was really hard to find store and manage. So that, that was actually the past situation. So now I'm going to go on the aims part. So I'm going to go, I'm going to speak about what, um, what an infrastructure like the state of Tocantins can be, can be expecting while actually managing this, this data and how to manage that data. So there was a development and implementation of a multi-user information system for storage, organization, visualization, analysis, uh, availability and sharing of geospatial and statistical data information. So the goal of uh, the state of Tocantins was actually to share all that data that was coming from the Department of Finance and Planning. 
And the goal was to integrate that data on an infra infrastructure and show it to, to as many people as possible in the population. So there were, there were other goals that was like, for example, allowing three tier ar architecture. So for example, with the web client, application server and database server, um, there was also a need to use uh, interoperability, metadata and geospatial data dissemination standards in accordance with uh, different standards. So now I'm gonna speak about what our company and the solutions we are making available can, can offer to, um, to organisms like the state of Tocantins and how did it work with the state of, of Tocantins? What actually went very su successful on this cooperation? So the first thing to know is that our structure is called GVC Online. So this is an online platform that I'm, gonna, that I'm gonna show you after at the end of that presentation that allows the creation of special data infrastructure online and the storage of as many data as possible. There is no limitation on the size and on the type of data that you can store. So that's just to show that there is many different servers on on uh, GVC Online. So the, the good thing in implementing a special data infrastructure on GVC Online is the whole technology is based, is based sorry, on the platform. Um, this is an open source software, which is very useful in sharing, managing data. It allows the development of new tools on a very regular basis. Um, the generation of different geoportals um, without any limitation of any type. So it means you can actually create as many geoportals as possible, as many projects as possible, and you can store many, many types of data without limitation. And also training can be provided by, by our company. If an organism like a state, uh, for example, a government a municipality wants to use uh, this platform. So with Token Teens, there were many projects that have been developed on the platform. Um, so these projects were of many, many types, very various types. So for example, there could be some uh, digital cartographic base of the state. So for example, just some baseline assessments of, uh, for example, uh, some areas in the state. So for example, I, I can take the example of national parks, uh, nature reserve or, or many, many things like that. So very simple projects that could allow um, the management of data and the storage of that data on the platform. So it could be also the, one of the good thing of, of GVC online, it allows uh, using lots of different symbologies. So on the same way as um, as a normal GIS, GIS software, sorry. Um, it can allow the creation of many, many layers, many symbologies. So the data can be represented in many, many different ways using, for example, color, size, and many different kind of representations. So there was, like I was saying, many projects that, was, that were developed on the, on the platform with uh, the state of Tocantins. So there could be some ecological economic projects, agroecological projects. So again, there was no limitation on the, on the variety and the diversity of projects that were um, possibly may have made available on the platform by the state of the cantons. So again, another example of what could be done. So even graphics could be had. Many, many things were possible. I'm going to show you again at the end of that presentation what's uh, what's available, what's possible to do with uh, GVC Online. But again, there is no limitation on the kind of projects um, uh, an organism like the state of Tocantins can be doing on that, on that type of platform. Another thing that's very interesting with, with that platform and that was very successful with the state of Tocantins is the use of satellite images. So the good thing with uh, these kind of files is that it can give a really good representation of what really is going on on the field. And it actually allows, for example, the digitaliz digitalization of different layers uh, related with what could be seen on the satellite, on the satellite image on the, on the field. So for this presentation and as a conclusion, I would just um, say that the, the, the main advantages of using our platform for an organism 
such as the state of the canteens is, for example, the free access to consultation, the copy and print of geospatial vector and raster databases. Uh, for example, for the raster, uh, the satellite image, like I was saying just before, and the generation of thematic maps in PDF format. So it is a really easy way, and that's what, what was working with the state of token teams of, of consulting the data, generating data, and actually create layouts of these data, for example, maps in, for example, PDF format. Um, the, the, the metadata metadata management is based on, on Concar. So um, all the metadata is stored. So, I mean, the data is very easily reachable and usable. Um, the platform uses free software. This means um, it is very accessible and very easy to use. And there is an integration in the making of available future informations on, on a regular basis. So now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna show you how the platform looks like and how it's possible to use it. So as you so this is how the platform looks like. Um, you have many many different uh, items on the menu on the left. So for example, here you have all the list of the projects that can be done. So a, a, a project that you are actually launching with uh, with an organism of any type can be either private. So if it's, uh, for example, this time to only like some people in a company or a really, really few people, or it can be public if it's, if it's for example, uh, made to be available to as many people as possible in the population. So you have here the list of projects that can be created, again, without limitation. So you can launch and create as many projects as, as you want on this platform. So just to take an example um, of one project. So you are going to be redirected on, on actually a base map. So it works pretty much on the same way as a normal GIS software, like you can know with, for example, GVC desktop that has been launch, uh, launched also by, by our company or for example, uh, QGIS or RGIS. So you have, for example, a base map and you can actually have all the, all the, um, all the layers that you can use for different projects. So all the layers are gonna be stored here exactly like a normal GIS software. And you can actually add as many layers as you want, as much as the project, it works the same way. So launching launching a project is very easy. You just have to, in the end, um, use the file manager to add all the data you want to create or that you want to use during this project. You can create different directories depending on the projects you are using. Um, Depending on the data of the data you are using, you, you are going to be able to classify them in different folders. Uh, once the data is actually on the platform, you just need to actually go into the folder and then use the data you have. So for example, if it's a shape file, uh, you just have to basically just export the shape file to the database. So once the shapefile is going to be exported to the database. You're going to be able to use it. So you're just going to have to, for example, create the layer in, a, in the database you have created to actually make, him, make the layer available for your project. And once the layer has been made available on the database, you are going to be able to link this to a project. So you can create projects here so you just need to basically add it, choose the extent, the geographical extent you want for the project. So depending on where the project is going to be based, you can give a name to the project, a title, description, if you if you wish. You can actually choose if you are going to hide the um, table of contents, if you are going to show it in groups and layers, etc. So there is many options available. Um, you just basically need to to see how many data do you need for the project. And again, there is no limitation. So you can import as much data as you want on the, on the platform and use it for the projects. So once you have linked the data to the project and you want to use it, you, you can actually change the symbology of the data. So 
depending on what you're going to use. So depending on the on the form of the of the vector layer. So depending if it's a line, a point, or a polygon, you're going to be able to change um, all the um, the symbology. So for example, you just need to click here. And you're going to be able to change actually the the the, um, the symbology. So the layer can be used uh, the way you wish to to use it. So regarding symbology, uh, and pretty much like I said, there is no limitation with uh, that platform. So for for an, an organism like the state of Tocantins, it's been something very successful with our company, and it allows to. For, for this kind of organism to create as many as many data as possible, generate as many data as possible, and share this data with the population, which is something uh, very interesting for this kind of organism. So that's all for that presentation. Thank you very much for listening to it. Don't hesitate to ask questions if you ask some. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matteo. Thank you for your talk. Uh, really impressive tool that you created there and um, yeah there are already two questions um, yeah and, uh, oops <laughs> I will start with the first one so you, you you spoke about integrating satellite images as a really valuable yeah. source and uh, is there any backend you use to process the satellite images or do you, is it also used uh, done by GBZIC? So basically everything is done on the platform. So the only difference you're gonna have with a satellite image um, in comparison with, for example, a polygon layer or line layer or some basic vector layer, the only difference is gonna be treated as a raster layer. But in the end it works the same way and it's actually the backend is all on, on JVC Online. Okay, thank you for that. The next question is, uh, you said that you really can add as many data as you want. And did you ever run toward a performance issue with that? Or is it just smooth running? So, so, so Tocantins, the, the project I was developing in my talk, is actually just one of the different projects we had to, to experience on GVC Online with different kind of organisms. And as far as we know, there is no there is no major performance issue going going on with with the data so that's why we actually say that you can you can actually load that ma as many data as you want because for the moment as as far as we know there is no main issue with the data and for example you can have some limitations problems of size and and stuff like that okay that sounds great um the last question is uh, personally from me. Um, it doesn't really have to do with your talk. It's just more my own interest. Um, yeah. I know it was a really long way to change the mindset towards open source in, in our country, in, in, in Germany. And how is the acceptance of open source in geospatial in Brazil? So, so the main difference with, for example, uh, countries in Europe is that it is very, um, can I say, it's very innovative for a state or for a geographic um, organism like the state of Tocantins in Brazil to use this kind of tool to represent data. Because the first thing is that in some countries you can actually have problems with finding the data because many data is not available, but it's actually a great way to, even if you are missing some data, it's actually a great way to just show what you have at the moment. So I'd say even in Brazil, it's something that's um, pretty much very well accepted. And I mean, population, it's a, it's a tool that can be usable by many people. And so I think there's not much difference in the end on the acceptance of the use of data in Brazil compared to Europe. Cool, good to hear. Okay. So thank you very much for your talk. Thank you very no much. Questions. I'm, I'm sure you will stay a little bit in the chat. So probably uh, if there are any other sure. questions come around, no just uh, don't hesitate. Thank you very much for your talk. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. And yeah, we again, we have a break for 10 minutes now. So again, time to, to grab some coffee or whatever you want to have. And uh, we will have the next talk at uh, 4 p.m. 
in time and uh, yeah i'm sure robin is already ready for his talk and um, yeah let's wait a few minutes because we just have to wait for people to come in see you in 10 minutes